Robbie, what's on your radar? Well, it's now been 10 days since Kyle Rittenhouse, the teenager who faced homicide charges for shooting three men during the riots in Kenosha, Wisconsin, was acquitted by a jury. While the outcome dismayed many in the progressive and mainstream media who view Rittenhouse as a vigilante or even a white supremacist, as I've explained previously on the show, the verdict was not surprising to anyone who closely followed the trial. Rittenhouse's claim that he only shot Joseph Rosenbaum, Anthony Huber, and Gage Grosskreutz in self-defense was supported by considerable evidence, including testimony from Grosskreutz. I can understand why the jury, after considering all the evidence, did not believe the prosecution met its burden of proof. If you've been watching us talk about the trial on this show, you probably know that I agree with the verdict. Now, millions of other people have a different opinion about the case, and that's okay. Different people can look at the same basic facts and make different determinations. I think Rittenhouse was clearly acting in self-defense, but if you disagree, fine. The ACLU, for instance, made a series of statements suggesting that the famed civil liberties organization was dismayed by the outcome. Now, I think those statements constitute a betrayal of the ACLU's basic principles, but okay, the organization can take this position if it really wants to. Maybe its experts are arguing in good faith and they honestly don't believe acquittal was warranted. But here's something that's the opposite of good faith. Many elite universities, centers of higher learning that are supposed to practice intellectual diversity and allow for robust discussion of tough issues, reacted to the Rittenhouse verdict as if the only permissible way to feel about it was stunned horror. In a terrific article for The Atlantic titled, Universities Try to Force a Consensus About Kyle Rittenhouse, Connors Friedersdorf notes that UC Santa Cruz, UC Irvine, the New School all released statements lamenting the outcome of the trial and suggesting that Rittenhouse's not guilty verdict was evidence of the power of white supremacy in US society. Quote, we are disheartened and dismayed by this morning's not guilty verdict on all charges in the trial of Kyle Rittenhouse, wrote UC Santa Cruz in a statement. We join in solidarity with all who are outraged by this failure of accountability. Trials such as these that have race-related implications can cause our BIPOC communities distress and harm. This is harm that is endured every day through acts of racism, the pervasiveness of white supremacy, and a flawed justice system, end quote. Now that statement left no room for nuance or a different opinion. The university's official position is that the acquittal was wrong and it will harm students. At Irvine, the vice chancellor for equity, diversity and inclusion and chief diversity officer said in his official capacity that quote, the conclusion of this trial does not end the reckoning about systemic racism in the United States. If anything, it has simply made it more legible. Again, keep in mind that all three of the people written out shot were white. His trial did not specifically involve race at all. I'm thus not quite sure why the chief diversity officer of a school thousands of miles away from Kenosha had to weigh in on this matter at all. But weigh in they did in a way that made it sound like the university thinks you're a racist if you agree with the jury. Dwight McBride, the president of the New School in New York, said that, quote, while I know my role is to lead this university with optimism, I must admit that I am falling short on words of positivity in this moment. I don't know immediately how to parse the Rittenhouse verdict at a university where students, faculty, and staff work so tirelessly and passionately for social justice. Well, maybe if you don't know what to say, then don't say anything at all. Connor Friedersdorf highlighted just these examples in his post, but then I, I went searching on Google and I found many others. There were a lot of universities weighing in on this in a very one-sided way. Connecticut State's administration said the verdict was a reminder that systems of inequity were not built in a day or a moment. They have been manufactured, crafted, and honed through generations of practice and reinforcement. And Fitchburg State University in Massachusetts Center for Diversity and Inclusiveness set up racially segregated safe spaces, separate spaces for students of color and white students to process their separate trauma about the outcome. Do these administrators understand what they're saying? The implication of all these statements is that a 17-year-old who, according to a jury of his peers, shot three people in self-defense, should be going to prison for the rest of his life, and any outcome other than this was unacceptable, racist even. So that's an obnoxious level of certainty, and I can't help but think students on these campuses who agreed with the verdict will be more likely to keep quiet. Universities are supposed to foster intellectual curiosity. Members of campus who disagree with the verdict should talk about it, enter into dialogue with those who, who agree with it, have a discussion. Students are on campuses to learn, to be challenged, to change their minds, not to languish in some progressive echo chamber, some self-parodying woke bubble. But the leaders of the institutions are explicitly saying there's only one right way to feel about what happened, when instead the administration should at least display some neutrality, some understanding that different people feel different ways about what happened in Kenosha. That's what Connor Friedersdorf was arguing in his Atlantic article. 
Bizarrely, it prompted Jason Stanley, a professor of philosophy at Yale, to opine that institutional neutrality is not just bad, but a threat to democratic institutions. Stanley has a new book coming out called How Fascism Works, The Politics of Us and Them. I would urge Stanley and people who work in university administrations that agree with him to consider whether they might not be reinforcing the politics of us and them by othering the millions of Americans who are relieved that Rittenhouse walked free. So as I tried to explain there, I, I have no problem with, with people who have a difference of opinion on the Rittenhouse outcome. I think it's proper at a university setting to have discussion about it. I, I think if there are professors, particularly legal experts, who feel differently, they, they I absolutely, even I, if I vehemently disagree with what they say, I totally support their right to say something. And if they were, they got in trouble, if they were disciplined for that, that would be, that'd be something I'd write about and talk about on the show. But it's different for the university administration itself to take such a strong, strident, in, in a sort of, like, like there is psych, there's harm or there's emotional danger or something that we must we have to weigh in in, in such a way, and I saw it in so many campuses doing this. Um, I don't know. What do you think? It does sound very strange that the university, the abstract entity of the university right. itself, has an opinion about right. the verdict and feels like it has to share that opinion. I, like I don't, I right. don't quite understand who is curious what their opinion is and who it affects. Like who, what, right, because you, this you isn't an Santa education Cruz, issue. This hmm. didn't take place at a school. It's not, these aren't Wisconsin yeah. schools weighing in. Right, the sociology department, sure. The chair of that department has an opinion. Absolutely, I wanna, I wanna hear those opinions. Yeah. If they were coming at it from an educational perspective, that I guess I could, I could make some sense of that. They could have said something like, you know, it, you know, we, we disagree with the judge's decision not to allow the drone footage to be zoomed in on because mm -hmm. because of his like uh, idiocy around tech. Like he, he was like, I zoom in on my iPhone and I don't like that. So therefore you can't zoom in. Like if they wanted to and say, we're going to explore the, the, the implications of a, ger uh, a, you know, a geritocracy running our judicial system. Uh, or, and, and because that footage was not allowed to be zoomed in on, and because Richie McGinnis is, had pressed the wrong button and so didn't have footage of the initial you know, shots being fired and the, the initial encounter between Jojo Rosenbaum and Kyle Rittenhouse, then, you, then we don't know precisely what happened. And in that, in that space is a, a, an opportunity for us to discuss uh, you know, all the different aspects of this case. You know, from you know the, mm -hmm. the social ones and and the narrow ones. Okay, fine. We can, but but for the university administrators to have a precise opinion and feel the need to share it through their administrative channels, it's just odd. Because I don't think they it's wanted. Like when Campbell's soup had a, had takes <laughs> right. on, on like. Uh, on, on all kinds of mm -hmm. social issues. Well, and I don't, the universities, I don't think they wanted to have discussions about the case. They were, it was right. almost like, there's, right. okay, here's what, right. here's, the, no discussion. here's the right, right. opinion. This is so horrible. We're so sad. Sorry. We're very sad. We assume you're sad. Yeah. We know you're sad. Let's, let's heal. Let's process. Let's not talk about it. Because yeah. they don't, can you imagine, I, this, this is an indictment of how, uh, I, I think, you know, monoculture universities have become because you could have an inter I mean, we've been having interesting discussions about this case on the show. That's something that should happen in, in law classrooms, in sociology departments. But like, I, there, would be a, there would be some kids who, uh, who agree with me and, and would express right. this view. And then there would be other students who would say, well, you, you've, you know, you've microaggressed me or something. And then there would be very heavy handed university uh, interventions into that. So this is like their way of saying, okay, we've addressed it. No need to address it anymore. Right. And it's a risk calculus. There's nobody inside the administration who looked at the situation and was like, you know what, this doesn't really make any sense for us to weigh in on, <laughs> but there's no way that I'm going to be the guy that replies all and right? says, you know what, let, you know, let's, let's pause on this and maybe not comment on every verdict. Uh, so in, in, on, and the countervailing force is people who are like, this is a good thing mm -hmm. if we if we do it. It's like the the joke about not even a joke. It was a real thing. Like the last person who stopped applauding for a Stalin speech. <laughs> yes. Who were like, right. you don't want to be the. Right, you don't want to yeah, be the, the first one. You don't want right. to be the first one. You want to be the last right, one right. that's still going. Right. Uh, and so they would applaud for forty five minutes because nobody wanted to stop applauding. 
Not because they thought he was giving a great speech. <laughs> and, that, and, and that's how this crowd thinks it's works. A very, that's a very yeah. apt uh, comparison. But, and I'm looking forward to your radar right after this.